Welcome back to another episode of From the Point, my favorite point, presented by Sprite Winter Spice Cranberry. And we also, as you can see by the mics, got a new partner brand um, that we also like showing the show on, uh, Bleacher Report. Um, thank y'all um, for obviously allowing us to be a part of the brand and uh, appreciate y'all wanting to be a part of our brand. So appreciate everybody. Obviously got my boy Winston again. Uh, uh, you good, my brother? What up, guys? Um, I'm all good, man. Uh, super exciting, man. We're so thankful for Bleacher Report. This is a, this is a super exciting partnership. We're, we're really excited to bring you guys some of the stuff we've been working on. Um, but yeah, we're, 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 we're ready to go. We're ready to dive into it. Um, you know, Trey, I know, I know it's been a while since we recorded. Uh, last episode dropped with Lou Williams, but um, congratulations, bro, uh, on the birth of your second second child, Teal yeah. Dove. Your dad of two now, man. What's it? What's it like having all them kids in the house? <laughs> all them kids. It's, it's not. It's not crazy amount right now. Uh, who knows how many I'll eventually have? But uh, I mean, it's a blessing, bro. I mean, having Titus was, I mean, an unreal blessing. Um, but now. Having Teal, it's it's even another special blessing. I mean, I had a little sister, so uh, to see that kind of style um, already be resembling is really cool. Um, I have two, obviously, two little sisters, so um, but it's cool. I mean, Teal is Teal is beautiful, man. Man, so so walk me through, man. I I don't have any kids, but <laughs> first week home with Titus or first week home with Teal, like who was. Who's up crying more? Who's who's the more chill baby? It's, like it's crazy because they're both similar. They're like, I don't want to jinx myself, but uh, they've both been really good as far as sleeping, not crying as much. Maybe I just got super lucky with that. Um, but no, nah, I haven't had any headaches with my my kids. So. That's, that's good, man. And uh, and Titus, man, he's in the studio with us today. Super super excited, man. He's uh he's over there watching on his little iPad and everything, but. Uh, how about how about this? In fact, I think I think we got a clip of uh, of Titus man. He um he's a, he's getting into basketball man. How how's that? Yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, he is. He's just uh, he has his little basketball goal in his oh, house right that there. he uh, oh yeah that he he messes with and um, I always bring my little basketballs around the house too. Uh, he he tries to take it and and uh, and run around and throw it to my dogs with it too. So. It's cool because he knows what a basketball is and what a hoop is, but he he can't do anything right now with it. But uh, eventually, I, I I know he will be. So it's, it's really cool to see. Man, future future point guard, man, and the <laughs> fist bumps are are hilarious, man. But oh, yeah, he'll give anybody a high five fist bump, and he will not leave until he gives everyone a fist bump. Oh yeah, nah, that's that's his mom teaching him that. Yeah, for sure. So um, we can we can jump right into it, man. I think uh I think one of the most exciting things over the weekend was the um the in season tournament um. Congratulations to the Lakers, but I think it's been interesting to see the reactions that you guys have given, as in players um, overall around the league, um, their opinions about the in-season tournament. Kevin Durant even said, um, the intensities of these games has been incredible. I wasn't a fan at first, but now I'm a huge fan of the in-season tournament. What are, what are your thoughts on the in-season tournament? What do you think now that it's, now that it's over with for this year? Um, what were your overall thoughts? I mean, I think that – it turned out great for the league. I mean, having the the Lakers win it all is is always going to be great for the league. I mean, a lot of people watch the Lakers and support. I mean, that's a big brand. Um, so them winning the first first one is obviously great for the league and great for the in-season tournament. I think it was great for the whole league, I mean, in general, just from the competitive aspect. I mean, you can tell just a different intensity level just from those games to regular season games early on. And uh, so you could definitely feel the, the difference. And uh, I think the, the lead did a great job of like making it a different feel and different vibe. I mean, the course were different. Um, some were better than others, but uh, I think they, they did a good job of making it a cool vibe and making a lot of people really interested in it. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of course, man, um, I saw Atlanta had that icy blue court, man. Yeah. That was, that was so nice. What were your thoughts on, on the championship court? I know you didn't get to play on that, on that court. But. It, it was cool. I mean, it was cool. Um, cool to watch cool to see I mean I wish we, we could have won on ours but um I mean it was cool to see like the different different themes I mean the, the championship court was clean um but just there's a lot of really cool courts I mean 
Minnesota had a really cool one. Uh, there's a couple of cool ones. That, I know we, we played Detroit. They had a cool one, too. Speaking of players' opinions on on things, too, I know uh, originally, like, during media day and stuff, they were showing showing guys the courts, and there were some pretty funny clips. Man, what were uh, – as a player, what was it like? I mean, I don't know. Had you ever played on like a like a purple court before or a blue court? And like, did that have anything to do with your game? Like, did you feel like your depth perception was off? Like, nah, nah. You don't really. It don't really make no difference. I mean, it's 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 cool for the fan from the fan aspect. But like, once you get because you're on the court a little bit before warming up and stuff, and once you can see where the lines are, and you can kind of really tell anyways because the seats and the the way the arena is set up. So. Um, but no, nah, it's not really too much of a difference. It's it's really more yeah. from the the visual, from the fan aspect, and um, which makes it cool for the players too, because you get cool jerseys and cool things like that that match it. So, uh, I mean, it works hand in hand. So, in other words, if if you can hoop, you can hoop, and it, it don't matter. Yeah, that's. Basically. But if you can't hoop, like it doesn't it doesn't also doesn't help you either. Yeah, it don't it don't <laughs> make no difference. Um, so the uh, it was interesting. It was it was pretty public that the Pacers actually had the lowest payroll in the league and then making to the finals um they they got incredible financial incentives of like just just making it that way yeah and talk about that i you can talk about whether it was the opinions in the hawks locker room or just overall talking with your peers in the league but that was like that was real money that was on the line for the in season tournament as in um you know some incentive to get you guys going and stuff what was uh what were your initial thoughts on that, and how do you think those potentially changed um, um, as the season kind of went on? Uh, no, I think I mean that was good. I mean they added prize money for the for the uh, the in season tournament. Like I think that was was what was going to really draw a lot of teams and making them fully buy in because um, it's not just. I mean, because you you heard from LeBron talk about it. Like, I mean, it's not just about the the high guys who make a lot of money. It's about really now you're competing with your brothers even more. Now you got the bench maybe even more involved and can, I mean, engage in the game and things like that because they know if they win, they get they get to eat too. So I think it really engages more of a team aspect too in that in that way. So it can be a positive like that. Um, I don't I don't see really any any cons when it comes to the prize money. So. I think that's, I mean, really good for the league and what they did. Uh, is five hundred enough? Five hundred thousand? Or you think it needs to be more if you win? Nah, I mean five hundred. Five hundred is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, five hundred is a lot of money. So, I mean, you seen if, I mean, if, if Bron can go out there and play, play hard and do all that for five hundred, I mean, what what other player can't? So, uh, that's that's kind of what it is. Absolutely. So I know th- throughout. There were there was some debate whenever kind of the wild card and the knockout stages were starting about the point differential. Like there were there were a couple teams that were like in the fringe, you know, kind of in the hunt for making it to the to mm-hmm. the knockout round and stuff. What were your thoughts on the point differential and going into next year? Would there be any re- recommendations that you would have to potentially change that? Um, to be honest, I wasn't super well versed on it. Like it was a little confusing to me. I know there are some some leagues in Europe that kind of have the same thing when it comes to like Champions League and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, talk talk to that thought thought process. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's part of it. I mean, it's I don't think it's you should feel one way about it. I mean, the other. I think it's part of it. Like I I, I know some guys get mad. Um, me personally, I wouldn't have gotten mad. I think it's it's part of it. It's part of the game. Like it's a different criteria for a different circumstance. Like it's not like a regular game. And if you get your head beat in, like sometimes you just gotta take it. I mean, like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like it's. I think that's that's just part of the game. Like, um, so I to be honest with you, I'm not really mad about it. I don't really get offended um, seeing it. I mean, if it was happening to us, I think. The Cavs were trying to do it to us. I mean, I didn't feel, I didn't feel a certain way about it. I think they were trying to get in, and um, we were already out, and they were just trying to, trying to get in. So, I don't, I don't think it's any disrespect. I think it's a different, different circumstance, and a different criteria is what was was needed in certain certain games. Trey, I don't know if you saw, but there was this uh, this clip that that was kind of going viral a little bit. Um, <laughs> I came in, in the green room and I told Kenny, I said, Kenny, Trey is the real deal. Question. You remind me of a So is Tyrese. <laughs> I mean, Tyrese, excuse me. 
You remind me of it, Ernie. It ain't me. It's that damn cannabis behind me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's hilarious, bro. Shout out Shaq, man. <laughs> uh, shout out Shaq. The 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 cannabis reference behind him for for a uh, for a misspeak is is great. But that's but. just that's just that's just part of it. I mean, he just he forgot. I mean, that ain't no shade towards Tyrese. He's he's at a hooper. all at all. I I totally agree. I think um, I, I I took that as a as a compliment to you to be honest. Is like you y'all both are balling at this point. Yeah, you know? I mean we we both hoopers. I mean just because he's there and I'm not don't mean people ain't thinking about me. Now that the in-season tournament is kind of wrapped up, um, what were your overall thoughts? I know we saw some some players emerge. Speaking of Tyrese, had a hell of an in-season tournament. Um, it's been playing really well this season. But any surprises to you throughout the in-season tournament? Man, I mean, obviously, there's no, there's not like it's like an NCAA tournament type of, of vibe. Like it was really one. I mean, taking it one game at a time and. I, whoever gets hot can win it all. And, I mean, the Pacers went on a hell of a run. Tyrese was balling, um, scoring, getting everybody involved. I mean, it was crazy to see. Uh, Buddy was killing for him, Miles Turner. Uh, they had a lot of guys who played well. Aaron, I mean, Nesmith, uh, playing the way he played defense on, on Giannis and uh, even Braun in certain, on certain moments. Was, those last couple of games was, was crazy to see, so. I mean, the Pacers obviously made made a name for themselves and and uh, gave themselves a little bit of feel of what of uh, I mean a, a playoff environment would be like, especially those games versus the Celtics and the the Bucks, um, but really the Celtics. So I think it was just a good good experience. A lot of a lot of teams can learn from things. We can learn from things. And next year, I'm, I'm sure Adam Silver will add some new things that'll make it even more cool and. Uh, it'll get even better next year. Yeah, pivoting to the Lakers, like I said, congratulations to them. But how do you think that expectations now that they've won the East in season tournament have changed now that you know they're we're going into All Star break soon, uh, and you know going into the playoffs? Do you think that winning that in season tournament gives them a different type of pressure? Or um, I mean, maybe from the outside looking in, I think. I think anytime you play for the Lakers, you're gonna have pressure on you, uh, just in general. So I don't think they necessarily feel that when you you win a an in season tournament, that I mean they're gonna have more pressure on them. I think they already feel that they have pressure on them every night they play, and um, that's how you should feel if you play for that organization. So um, I don't know how they feel. Um, I know as a competitor playing against them, I I think we still look at them like like they're the Lakers, and we just gotta. I mean, when we play them, we just like another game. We gotta, we gotta play them. We know it's a different environment in there, and whenever they come there to your place, it's a different environment. So, um, but they're still the Lakers, though. Yeah, man. Speaking of speaking of the y'all's place and all that, I think it's a great way to transition to the Hawks season. Um, we haven't recorded since uh, since you guys started. So, um, overall, man, I know I know you guys are are just getting started, but how, how you feel about the season so far and what you guys are building and Oh, out there in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like we we got off to a, an okay start. Um, it, it it was tough after really Jalen went down. Um, I don't know what our record was whenever um, before he went down, but I know we've we haven't really won too many games since he's been out, and uh, he's a big piece that we're missing. Um, we're already a, I mean, a kind of um, young team, not very experienced team. Um, after a, a couple guys. But uh, and Jalen was playing like the most improved player for us, and not only us, but just killing the whole league every every night he played. So having him out, I mean, kind of hurts us in in a couple ways. And um, but I think we're still learning. We still have a long season to go. Um, we started off worse. Um, I've been in in worse circumstances and and finished great. So uh, it's really about just finding. Uh, a good streak of wins and finding a, a place where we can we can build off some wins and and learn off some wins and also getting some guys healthy and getting them back and then uh, I feel like we'll be good. Yeah, speaking of Jalen Johnson, I think he uh, like you said, definitely a candidate for most improved. What have you been most surprised about with his progression from last year to this year? And then what are you looking forward to him providing you guys as you guys as group and and ball club? Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot. I mean, Jalen's done different. I mean, but for me, I think from what I see is his confidence. And obviously your confidence always grows as you 
as you play more and you get more minutes and more experience. And so he's obviously getting a lot more of that this year, and you're seeing the confidence grow every game that he plays. But just from shooting the ball, um, when he gets the ball, pushing it, um, he doesn't make too many mistakes, um, and that's something that's really good. Uh, so I, I just love playing with a, a guy that's that's smart, um, but he still has a lot of a lot of room to grow, and he knows that, and he's so um, open eyed and wide eared that he he's he's willing to listen to people around him that that's, that's going to help him get better too. So he definitely has has a bright future. I know we're early on in the season, but with Jalen Johnson, a healthy Hawks team, where do you where do you think you guys? pan out in the East this year? Uh, I mean, we we have a chance. I mean, the last two years has been, been some crazy, crazy runs in the in the East. I mean, teams going to the championship as eight seeds. And um, it's, it's all about just being hot at the right moment. So, like, it's hard to really judge where where we'll be. But I, I feel like our potential, we can beat anybody um, if we're fully healthy and we're we're at the right mindset and we're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. Yeah, y'all can definitely beat beat anybody, especially if you drop in people uh like you like you did in this clip. Oh. Uh, yeah, y'all y'all beating anybody if y'all do that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a crazy. <laughs> oh, <it> was reaction. <laughs> oh, it was reaction. Didn't want to look at it. They got they got the win. D'Anthony got the last laugh. That was definitely a a nice, nice play for sure. I, uh, I haven't done anybody like that before. Dropping somebody like that. What's it like to drop somebody like that? Man, bro, it's, it's just like a, it's like a, I don't know, a feeling, man. It's like, you know, it's like. No, I do not know. Don't do that, cause that's that's not that's not truthful at it's, all. It's like, um, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a feeling you have and. It's like an adrenaline rush. And why? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you say, you like you know? That seemed like a. No, nah, cause I'm sure like, you probably had like a little, cousin or somebody you was messing around with and. Oh, okay. I thought you were you were implying that you dropped me before, and I was about to say no. Nah. Nah. I no. definitely have you. No, in the you clip, haven't. Though. No. What what clip? Exactly. No. I think I think we can we can find a clip every. Putting it on the record that Trey Young has I, never. N e v e r drop me. Dro- Dropped never, you? Never. Or are you in a clip? <laughs> no, not in a clip. Neither. Okay. Wow. Okay. Not in the clip. Neither. Do you have it on your phone by any chance? No. I, okay. I switch phones. <laughs> but I can find this clip though. I'm glad. I'm glad you made the shot though, because um, I think, I think this year in particular, there's been an offensive explosion around the league. Teams have become incredibly efficient in their offense. There are four teams right now that are averaging higher than 120 points. Mm-hmm. You guys, the Atlanta Hawks, Indiana Pacers, Milwaukee Bucks, and uh, the 76ers. Um, yep. Who do you <laughs> think has there been? Uh, has there been a certain person in the league that has kind of helped drive that offensive explosion this year? Um, whether it be current guys or whether it be um, guys who have just, you know, helped change the game just in general? Um, and, and why do you think that this year in particular the, the offensive around the league has not only been incredibly efficient but also scoring a lot, a lot of points? I mean, it's – I think it's a, a lot of different cases. I mean, a lot of different reasons that, I mean, teams are scoring at a high clip. I think first reason the, the Warriors – and what they've done since they're the start of their dynasty and they really had the best offense for a lot of years and won a lot of championships. Um and then you got like nowadays, you got last year, you got the Sacramento Kings, I think, breaking a record and having points per game. Um and just their offense and how firepower they were. Uh and then like you just have a lot of young guards that come in just ready to play. Like ever since really my drafts with me and Luca, like ever since then, it's like guards coming out every year. It's like ready to to go from day one, or um, or or put put on to go from day one. It's like, I mean, guards are ready. And then you got the Pacers. I mean, their coach, two of their coaches, coached coached me and Luca. I mean, and our offenses have always been great. So it's mm-hmm. like, offenses in the game is 
I mean, it's perennial. Like, you need to have really good offense, but the best teams have both. Like, the best teams have really good offenses and a really good defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what makes the difference between a, a great team and just a, an okay team. Yeah, and what would you say to the critics that say that this offensive explosion in the NBA is due to a lack of defense? And they, they just – that's just – that's just that's lame. That's lame excuse. I think that's just because the the talent level is so crazy. Like the what guys are what guys are capable of doing, and just the cerebral ability of some of these guys that also have talent and God given length and and I mean size on them. Like it's 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 tough to guard these guys when they're smart. I mean with the talent that they're given. So I think the the talent today is is also a reason why the offenses are so high and scoring I, so high yeah i agree i think that like you said lame i think lazy is probably another word in that i think i think that saying that all the offensive explosion is due to a lack of defense actually isn't gri giving offensive schemes offensive players enough credit that they actually do i mean you've seen Gold, golden state for example if you just watch some of their possessions like they'll track the way steph runs around and he's running you know couple hundred feet in a single possession mm -hmm. like that's all type of schemes and for and, sure yeah and it's and also like it's hard to for 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 a team like the Pacers or a team like us that are going to score 125 130 points to keep a team to 105 or 106 a night because then you're beating teams by 30 like it may be a we may not be the number one defense so we may be 10 to 15 but that's that's better than being you know 25 to 30 you know yep. what i'm saying so i think that's that's where it can get kind of lopsided too because really good offenses you obviously have more possessions exactly that you're giving the other team too so you're they're going to naturally score some yeah so. exactly um you know i think uh you're a natural born scorer anyways and um i'd say you have a pretty uh deep bag deep <laughs> deep bag of tricks when it comes to comes to scoring the ball man um i've uh i've witnessed it for a couple years now but um i actually have i actually have a few a few tweets um that we can go through um and this is actually yeah. something new that we're going to be starting on on from the point um we we encourage all our audience members to to send in some tweets comment on our youtube channel um use use the br app to send in some tweets we're actually going to be answering a few a few questions each episode um but i have a couple here um first up overall who's the funniest player player in the nba funniest player in the nba to me is Jokic. <laughs> to me is Jokic. really he's, why he's hilarious like um uh, just some of the stuff like you see some of the stuff he does in his like in his post game in his interviews or whatever like just being like <laughs> Like in games with him, interacting, little moments and all star behind the scenes, little moments. It's like he's so he's he's funny. Can you imitate one of his uh his no, reactions? You, you can't you can't <laughs> imitate it. I remember being in Charlotte one year. I think he did. We did the skills skills challenge together, and we were just in the the back, and he was just making everybody laugh. Like it was, he's just hilarious. He he is hilarious though. His uh his game is great, but man, that that dude's a comedian for yeah. sure. Folks say you still don't play defense, though. <laughs> uh, somebody actually wrote in and said, um, folks are saying Trey Young doesn't play defense. Uh, right here you can see uh, you actually have a game-saving charge yeah. to, to win the Spurs game. Yeah. What's yeah. your thoughts on uh, not playing defense? I mean, it's, I mean, you can't say that this year. It's been my best year playing uh, defense. I mean, I mean, that's, that's I mean, just a fact. Um you can hate all you want. I mean, that's that's just what it is. I've, I mean, taking charges, uh, just being there for my teammates. Obviously, we can we can all be better. I can be better on that end. Still, we haven't won enough games for me to say I'm uh, first team or anything. But definitely getting better. Uh, but definitely, definitely been a thing on my mind. And what do you think? moving forward has allowed you to not only continue to get better at defense, but as you guys go throughout the season not only for you to continue to be solid defensively, but your entire team to continue to improve. I think my coach helps me a lot in just putting me in spots and places and just telling me where to be before um, 
I'm put in spots where I can't really help myself. I mean, I'm already at like a, a disadvantage um, in a lot of ways. So just being knowing where to be early before the, the offense gets there is, is important too. So my coach helps me a lot with that. For sure. Um, as of today, uh, what's the biggest NBA rivalry in the NBA? Today, what's the biggest NBA rivalry? Um, you go first because I have my own take on this. Okay, you go first because I'll, I'll need a second. I would say based off of last year, it's probably not the biggest, but I think it's one of the most exciting rivalries is Kings Warriors. I think Kings it would Warriors. be I think it would be great to see another playoff series like that. Um, I think at every position on the court, they have a great matchup at all times. So I think Kings that uh, I think the Kings Warriors is a is a is a good one. I think there are some more Kings but. Warriors. I think um, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I mean, Fox and yeah, that's a mm -hmm. good Kings Warriors. Man, I don't, I don't really you don't see really teams hating each other like that. I mean, you see. Steph and that that Warriors and Kings being that, mm -hmm. but I don't know, I don't know. Either that or there ain't no really rivalry no more. Why do you think it's not like it used to be, in terms of like rivalries? It's because these refs don't let nobody show emotion, and as far as just like you can't say nothing to nobody. As far as it's not even, it ain't even got to be egregious or nothing. It's, it can be dunking on somebody and just giving them a look like it's a tech. Like that is the craziest thing to me. Like just from growing up watching guys, you guys used to be able to dunk and yell. At, like it's different. It's different. Like that's how you build rivalries. Mm -hmm. When you talking, you getting scored on, and you like going back and forth. And then it's different. Guys getting face to face, then you can call a tech and, and right. break them up. But guys are just talking, like. Even my first couple of years in the league, it was different than how it is now. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's it's crazy. I think the rest don't allow it, uh, us to have really NBA rivalries. Yeah, for real. that's fair. I think so, that's a that's a fair take. Yeah. Um, who do you think is the most explosive athlete in NBA history? Oh, most explosive athlete in NBA history. Uh, there's a lot. Um. Dang, most explosive. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Russ. I mean, mm. just from what I mean, explosive, mm. like just off the off the run, dribble, like off one, off two. D Rose could jump off two. I didn't necessarily see him jump off one all the time, but D Rose, they come to mind. Like I don't know them two. Probably, I, probably Russ. I remember being at Oklahoma City games when we were growing up together, and man, Russ would get going on the break, man, and it was. Oh, it was over with. You better get out the way. You better get out the way. It was over with. It was over with. Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, D Rose, uh, throw LeBron in there, Vince Carter. Vince VC, VC was yeah. explosive. VC. Yeah, those are those are a couple. I remember seeing VC in practice. He's forty years old, like windmilling bro windmill like it was the lightest windmill i've ever seen like i thought he was ridiculous so maybe him too but russ as far as what i was seeing vision trey what's your opinion on what if trey young never got hurt in game three of the 2021 eastern conference finals man that's a great question what if i mean to be honest with you i ain't gonna lie yeah you ain't even got we definitely would have. Yeah. We would have won our first chip. That year for sure. I don't even want to talk about it. Because it's so hard to get back to that moment. It's like you just you just fight that feeling that you, you had your chance. But I know we're gonna have another one. Um, so yeah. That's been my biggest goal is just to get bring Atlanta their first their first ring. So that's gonna happen again. But yeah, getting hurt was not the best feeling because I definitely felt like we had a chance and we were on a run and we were feeling good. Um, guys were guys were going and that that should happen. And people don't understand uh, how difficult it is 
to to make it that far in the playoffs. How how difficult is it actually to make it that far in the playoffs? Just think about it. Like we had to we had to play. We were the fifth seed, so we had to play the fourth seed on the road to start it out. Went five games. Second round, we played Philly, who was the number one seed at the time. We had to go to their place first, and that ended up going seven games. So we won at their place at seven. And then just to that's just to get to the conference finals. Like, and then now we play in the Bucks, who were, I think, the second seed at the time. And we ended up going six and just fell short. But that just shows how hard it is. You give respect to the guys who who do it over and over again or um, just get there. And uh, so, yeah. You don't necessarily throw shade at the guys who necessarily can't, and because there's a lot of guys who are still playing who are, I mean, get a lot of love and a lot of praise who don't necessarily get to even the conference finals. So mm-hmm. um, you don't necessarily throw shade on them when they don't. As a player who's been there, um, I'm not speaking for the general fan, but just as a player who's been there, you don't necessarily throw shade on those guys because you understand how hard it is. But uh, it definitely sucks because I definitely feel we had a chance. For sure. Man, first episode in the books with Bleacher Report, man. How you feel? Man, I feel feel amazing. Um, I feel great. I think, I think that wraps us up, man. Well, first episode with Bleacher Report. Another episode of From the Point by your favorite point. Till next time. We'll see y'all. Make sure you can you're gonna be able to find From the Point on Bleacher Report all season long. Make sure you tune in on the BR app. And uh yeah. Peace. Peace.